What is up everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about the Cuckoo Rosiat series which I am going to be calling the Cuckoo series from now on just to make it a bit easier. We're going to dive into the damage calculations of the Cuckoo series to see how it ranks up with some of the other five star weapon series that we have in the game right now. And then we're going to take a bit of a dive into how we can augment the Kukurosiat weapon with some units to give ourselves the best experience or the best chance at completing the Geometric Labyrinth. So let's first get started with where these Cuckoo weapons drop. And I'm going to direct you guys to the Arx Visiphone website for some general information on where some of these drops are. Now the Arx Visiphone website is really good about showcasing some of the Alio locations as well as the Ritem locations, but everything there isn't completely accurate. So what I'm going to be doing guys, I'm going to have a pinned message down below with all of the monsters that drop each of these cuckoo weapons and where we know that they're located. But while you guys are out hunting and experiencing these monsters or seeing these monsters, please go ahead and reply or write a comment down below about what monster and where you found it. So we will have a definitive list on how and where you can drop every single Cuckoo series weapon. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and start diving into the numbers. Now, if you've seen some of my previous damage calculation videos, I use this Google Doc right here by Reyatsu. It's a damage calculator, and it is extremely useful to just see how different weapons stack up with others. But it isn't completely updated to the level 45 meta, so I'm gonna have to do some fine tuning on some of these stats to make this damage calculator work for the information we are trying to seek out today. So the first thing that I need to do, I need to find the new armor values for a level 45 Gigantix and 49. And why I need both of those is because within the Geometric Labyrinth, on the latest headline, we were informed that the monsters are going to scale to the highest party members level. So if we are to extrapolate on that, that would mean that all Gigantics or any monster that we would see in there would have a potential max level of 45. So we should see level 45 Gigantics. They should not scale up to 49. So I'm going to be using the defensive value of a level 45 for the example of calculating damage within the Geometric Labyrinth for the Cuckoo series. And then I also want to calculate the damage that the Cuckoo series will experience outside of the Geometric Labyrinth, since we know that the Cuckoo Weapon series potential gets additional bonuses for being within the Labyrinth that they wouldn't have when they're not doing that content. And lastly, I have to update the attack power of this example to a level 45 character. I am going to be using the attack power of a level 45 fighter, and you can find this information on the NGS verification data storage, and I will have that Google Doc link down below. So let's first start with the damage that you would experience with a Kukurosiat weapon while outside of the Geometric Labyrinth. This is going to not include any of the bonuses that you see on that potential. You're not going to get additional 5% potency and you're not going to get that 50% extra damage resist. So this is where the Kukurosiat is going to, going to be at its weakest point. And if you see in this damage chart right here, the Kukurosia weapon series actually has very similar stats to the first three weapon series that we have for five-star gear, that being the Quintal series, Fibla series, and Gothica series. And as a matter of fact, the, they line up almost perfectly. So the Kukurosia series is actually one of our weaker weapons when outside of the Geometric Labyrinth. These next shaded cells are just showing at what point will the Kukurosia series potentially out damage our best series, which would be the Relic and the Synquim series. And unfortunately, they will not. So for example, if you had a fix a five attack Kukurosiat, a clean HP or PP item potential Relic would still out damage this weapon. So the Kuku series isn't necessarily anything spectacular while outside of the Geometric Labyrinth. But here's something to remind you all about. We really don't have any extremely difficult content right now that would require you to go overboard on a weapon outside of potentially what we will experience in the Geometric Labyrinth. For example, you can go ahead and do 
purple triggers, rank 2 purple triggers with pretty much any weapon as long as it is limit broken to 50 and has decent augments. So I wouldn't stress too much about what we are observing here, I just wanted to highlight that you are not going to be doing insanely godlike numbers outside of the geometric labyrinth. But let's go ahead and look at the real data. How does the Cuckoo series perform when we're inside the geometric labyrinth? And here is that data sheet. Now a reminder, the defense of this enemy is set to a level 45 gigantic, so some of these numbers are going to look way bigger than the other, but we're not necessarily concerned about the number as much as the difference in value between some of these weapon series. And if you look, I'm gonna shade some cells right here, and all I am showing here is at what point do other weapon series have to be fixa-wise to compare to a clean Cucurosiat series weapon in the Geometric Labyrinth. And if you see here, the first three weapon series, they have to be Fixa 5 to potentially compare to a clean Cucurosiat weapon in the Geometric Labyrinth. That just shows you how powerful that additional 5% potency is when it is added because you're in that content. I shaded some additional cells to basically show what are achievable weapons. So you might be able to get into a fix a three or above Griega pretty easily. You will probably be able to find a relic that may have a fix a one, but anything above that's gonna be pretty tough. And for the Synquim series, you can probably get yourself into like a fix a attack three or a fix a fatal five. So I shaded everything that was potentially unachievable to the majority of the player base. And so all I am trying to show here is a very easy way where you can compare all of the values of the Cuckoo series, depending on their fixa, to other achievable weapons and fixas for that weapon series. All I really want to say about this weapon is that it is amazing in the Geo Lab. That additional 5% potency scales hard. It makes it just as good as a clean relic. And if you can potentially get a fix a one or fix a two attack, this weapon is just as good as a clean sync one with potential four. And so it is not the highest damage weapon that we have in the game, but you cannot discount that 50% damage resist bonus you are getting. That is going to be extremely important in the Geometric Labyrinth, especially when you start adding those extra challenges. I'm gonna show a screenshot of the extra challenges we saw within the headline teaser. There are a lot here. It makes the monsters crazy strong. It makes you super weak. That damage resistance is going to be imperative to trying to set some really high scores. So with the damage calculations out of the way, let's talk about some theoretical builds for this weapon, because I do think that there are going to be really good ways to augment a set with the Cuckoo series, and I do believe there are some very bad ways you can augment, and we're going to go through some of those right now. So I'm going to be using three builds for this example. The first one is going to be an offensive-minded augmentation. So for this build, I'm going to be using a Dust Soul 3, Gigas Might 3, Alt Secret 3, Deft Might, and Melra Doable. These are all really achievable capsules. If you have better ones or worse ones, it doesn't matter. In build two, we're going to be going for more, a more balanced defensive and offensive stat build. So I'm going to be using Dread Keepers to offset the Alt Secreta, and I'm going to be replacing the Melra Doables from build one with those Dread Keeper 3s. And then for build three, the goal is to go for even more damage resist while maintaining a balanced build. So we're going to be using Dread Keepers, but we're going to replace Alt's Secretas with the Deft Stat Capsules to minimize that damage resistance loss that the Alt Secreta Capsule has. And here are some finalized values for each of these builds. So you have damage reduction for each build, as well as their potency and variance. Variance is essentially your floor potency or your minimum damage. But what I want you to look at here is that there is only 7% damage reduction difference between build one and build three. And the thing about that is that there is over 14% damage resistance in those capsules difference, even though we only have 7% observed damage reduction actually taking place. So what is happening here to cause this calculation to only show 7% when we should see 14%? Well, many NGS stat calculations are based on a multiplicative scaling equation. So this means that all of the percentage bonuses you receive on equipment, augments, and skills are not additive. Rather, they scale off of how much of that stat you already have. So let's use the build one example. In that build, we had a few 
equipment and augments that would affect damage resistance. So the Cucurosiat series has the 5% damage resistance naturally, and then it gets that additional 50% damage resistance when in the Geometric Labyrinth. So what these numbers are is that 1.00 is indicating the 100% of damage we would receive upon being inflicted damage, and then that minus 0.05 is indicating the 5% damage reduction that we receive off of the Cuckoo series. And then we're going to multiply that by the next stat that will affect our damage resist in our build, which would be the additional 50% damage reduction that we receive while in Geometric Labyrinth. So we are going to have 0.95 times 0.50, and that's going to result in 0.475 or 47.5% damage reduction. So then the next four augments that affect the damage reduction in this build was the alt secretas and these are negative 1.5 damage resist they're going to make us take more damage so we're going to take that 0.475 from the cuckoo series damage reduction that we receive and we are going to do the same calculation here except since it is negative it's going to affect that percentage of damage inflicted in the opposite manner so it's going to turn into 1.015 and so you'll see here we go from 47.5% damage reduction to 48.2. And we need to do this three more times since we have three augments. So after we do that three times, we are going to finish with 50.4% damage reduction for this offensive minded build. So let's talk about those calculations. Essentially damage resist experiences diminishing returns due to this multiplicative scale. Since damage resist reduces the multiplier, all future additions of damage resist affect your damage resist stat less and less. And this is the exact opposite to how NGS potency scales. Since the multiplier increases above 100%, this makes all future additions of potency affect your potency stat more and more. So what you're observing here in this diminishing return calculation is that as you continue to add more and more damage resist to your build, the amount that you are receiving off every percent added becomes less and less. Therefore, you are not receiving as much value for each additional percent of damage resist you are putting on your build. And this is a huge takeaway for your build when it comes to using the Cuckoo series. Since your Cuckoo weapon is providing plenty of damage resist, you should really be seeking out HP first and foremost if you are interested in a more balanced or tanky build for Geometric Labyrinth. Some augments that can really help with getting extra HP are obviously Dreadkeeper 3, the Ritem Bossels give 15 HP, any Giga Stat Capsule will give HP, you can go into Stamina Stat Capsules, or even Ret Domina will give you 15 HP. There are plenty of other augments as well, but these are some really good HP capsules. And there's also a lot of units that will give tons of HP, specifically Vitalin Armor, which will give you 70 HP. If you were to use just a couple augments that I just mentioned above, you're looking at 100 to 150 HP on a single unit you could add for your Geometric Labyrinth runs. There's some other options too. Vital Armor will give some HP. The Schwarzis, Schwarzgard, and Schwarz Rosso units are incredible. They give some HP as well as potency, so you're still affecting your damage. And last but not least, you have the fifth armor, Arga, Shiza, and Belta variants. These give 20 HP, they give 1% potency, but the great thing about the fifth armors and some of these other units, especially Vitalin and Vital, you can find really cheap fixes for these units since not a lot of people are using them. You might be able to pick up one of these units with a fix a guard two or three for very cheap. And although I know I just said, don't dive into more damage resist, if you can get an item that gives you a couple more percent damage resist and after the diminished returns may give you 1% extra damage resist and it only costs you 30, maybe 40,000 Masetta, that's still helping you out when it comes to the Geometric Labyrinth and what we could experience with those additional challenges. So now the big question is when should you invest into a Cuckoo series weapon? Some of them are very cheap, but some are still worth millions to this day. So here's my thoughts on that. If you are new in leveling and you're looking for a 5-star weapon, the Cuckoo series should be your first choice. It will give you serviceable damage outside of the Geometric Labyrinth, plus it will provide some of the best damage and incredible damage resist while in the Labyrinth. You need to remember, this is our content for the next month or two, so if you are brand new, this should be your go-to no matter what. 
This is the most exciting content we've received since the beginning of the game. It should be a wonderful time. We still have no clue what we're going to get for rewards or what is in the Geometric Labyrinth. So it'll be a, an exciting time and you wanna set yourself up with the best odds to succeed and complete the Geometric Labyrinth. Now, if you are someone with a fully enhanced and augmented set, I would hold off until the prices drop. It is safe to assume that the Geometric Labyrinth will drop the Cuckoo weapons, and since it can be ran anytime with zero cost, a clean Cuckoo weapon will be for sale in abundance after just a few days. So you should not need a Cuckoo series weapon to complete the Geometric Labyrinth run without any extra challenges. It's only going to be necessary when you really add in those additional challenges. So for the first couple of days, take it slow, experience the Geometric Labyrinth, and then when you decide that you really need to invest in it, the prices should be much cheaper and you should be able to afford one without having to fork out millions of Masetta, and then you can continue to challenge yourself with those additional challenges. And my final, final, final takeaway, guys, enjoy the content. We have been waiting a long time for something like this, something that has variety, something that challenges us, something that gives us a reason to log in and practice our classes and our skills. So guys, enjoy the content, take your time. And if you do build a cuckoo weapon, let me know in the comments what you did to it. Let me know how did it serve you in this geometric labyrinth. I am extremely excited to try to challenge myself without a Cuckoo series weapon. And then hopefully, I hope at some point, I will need to invest in a Cuckoo weapon because the challenge is that difficult. But that's it guys, that's all I got for you. I hope this was extremely informative. I hope you learned something. I hope some of the calculations didn't get too crazy or too out of hand. But at the end of the day guys, new content is right around the corner. I am so excited to be able to participate with you all in that content. Good luck, best of luck with all of the loot and the drops, and I will see you all in the next video real soon.